This story begins at a highly prestigious educational institution. Kimito Kagurazaka, the protagonist, stands on stage, surrounded by a large number of female students eagerly raising their hands to ask questions. All eyes are on him, indicating a deep interest in what Kimito is about to say. However, before Kimito reached this moment, we need to go back a few hours. At that time, Kimito was relaxing at his desk, looking sleepy. A friend woke him up, asking Kimito to buy him some tea while reminding him that Kimito also intended to go to the store. Suddenly, the peaceful atmosphere turned into chaos. A group of muscular men suddenly barged in and kidnapped Kimito. They took Kimito away in a limousine, removing him from the school grounds. Inside the vehicle, the men proudly showed off their muscles, making Kimito feel extremely uncomfortable. When they finally arrived at their destination, Kimito was taken out of the car and thrown in front of a grand school. There, a girl dressed like a maid greeted him politely, explained the reason for his presence, and invited him to follow her. The girl introduced herself as Miyuki Kuju and explained that the institution was an exclusive academy for women from high society. Miyuki then took Kimito to meet the principal, named Sayuri Kamachi. Sayuri was the only person who truly understood the ins and outs of the school and told Kimito that after graduating, the students at this academy often faced significant cultural gaps when they had to interact with the outside world, especially with people from lower social classes and, particularly, with men. Kimito was surprised but tried to understand the reasoning behind his selection. Miyuki and Sayuri explained that Kimito was chosen because of his humble personality and apparent lack of special interest in women. This explanation referred to information provided by his friend, Hani. Though feeling angry, Kimito firmly denied having a muscle fetish. However, after facing serious threats that could result in his removal to protect the student's purity, Kimito eventually gave in and admitted to the supposed attraction he had towards muscles. Next, Kimito was introduced to his new class. At this point, the misunderstanding about what was considered a muscle fetish was revealed, which actually related to Kimito's interest in thighs. The first person to introduce herself was Reiko Arasugawa, the class president, who was a blonde girl around the same age as Kimito. After the introduction, Kimito's phone suddenly rang, startling all the girls in the class who had never seen such a device before, considering it something entirely new. Reiko, surprised to see the phone, told her friends that if the device belonged to Kimito, they should return it to him. This situation created a nervous atmosphere among them because no one knew who should return it, and Reiko felt very embarrassed. At that moment, a delegate politely offered to help return the phone. With graceful movements, Reiko prepared a special thank you, a letter adorned with a ribbon and accompanied by chocolates in an elegant box. However, due to the tension, when her hand touched Kimito's, Reiko almost lost consciousness. Kimito quickly caught her, preventing her from falling to the floor. Shortly after, a girl suddenly ran into the classroom and excitedly urged Kimito to come to the school garden. After some effort convincing the girl, Kimito finally managed to prove that what she believed was merely a myth. The girl then denied that she ever truly believed it in the first place. Kimito, doubtful of the girl's claim, jokingly suggested that if she turned her head three times and barked, any wish would come true. Without thinking, the girl followed the suggestion. Soon after, other girls arrived and revealed that the girl's name was Aika Tenkabashi. Because Aika rarely interacted with the other students, she quickly fled when they called her name. After that incident, Miyuki showed Kimito his living quarters at the academy, including his private room, which was a replica of Kimito's original room. When Kimito saw the room decorated with thigh posters, he immediately panicked and hurried to remove the posters to avoid any misunderstandings. Miyuki then explained that from that point on, she would be Kimito's personal maid, just like every student at the academy who has their own maid. However, Miyuki made it clear that she had no intention of doing anything for Kimito and reminded him of a mandatory meeting at 3 o'clock to explain Kimito's arrival at the academy. As soon as Miyuki left and closed the door, Aika entered with an angry expression, feeling disappointed that Kimito didn't fulfill her wish. However, upon seeing the contents of Kimito's room, Aika was shocked as she had never seen anything like it before. In their conversation, Aika expressed her desire to integrate with the commoner's culture so she could become a popular girl. Kimito explained that Aika didn't need to desire to make friends, the only important thing was to behave normally. And explained that as someone who is straightforward and often unfiltered, she fears that others might not like her. Despite this, Aika deeply desires to have friends and to experience school life surrounded by her classmates. Understanding her feelings, Kimito gave her a gaming console and showed her how to use it. Aika was both surprised and delighted, asking Kimito to teach her more about commoner culture so she could become popular. In fact, Aika proposed forming a commoner club. After considering it, Kimito eventually accepted the idea, which made Aika extremely happy. Now, Kimito stood on stage before all the students. 
They asked him several trivial questions about daily life and the general society. After Kamido provided a simple yet insightful explanation about the life of commoners, the students, who had long been in the same class, were deeply surprised and intrigued. Seeing her classmates' enthusiasm, Aika also felt the same excitement, growing closer to her goal of becoming popular and accepted among the other students. The next morning, Kamido woke up with Miyuki loyally by his side. As his personal maid, Miyuki was responsible for assisting Kamido with various tasks, from waking him up to helping him get dressed. However, Kamido could sense that Miyuki wasn't particularly enthusiastic about her role. With a considerate tone, Miyuki suggested that Kamido use the back door when leaving the dorm. Kamido was confused by the suggestion. When he asked why, Miyuki explained that after yesterday's incident, it would be better for Kamido not to draw attention until he arrived in class. As soon as Kamido stepped out through the back door, he met Aika, who was speaking loudly and catching the attention of the other girls. Aika told Kamido that she always used the back door and thought that since Kamido was becoming more popular, he should do the same. Kamido reminded Aika about the commoner club activities that were starting that day. While talking, Kamido noticed that their maids were following them from behind. Kamido then proposed a trade, he would teach Aika how to live like a commoner, while Aika would explain various things about the academy. Aika was surprised by this offer and asked why Kamido didn't ask Reiko for help. Kamido explained that Reiko was too cute to deal with, and it made him uncomfortable, unlike Aika. Hearing this explanation, Aika got angry and hit Kamido. When they arrived at the classroom entrance, they met Reiko, who suggested getting together after class. Reiko wanted to throw a welcome party for Kamido, which made Aika feel jealous. Throughout the day, Kamido started to get attention from the girls in his class because he was different from the usual guys. After a few classes like English and Physical Education, Kamido became curious about Aika's whereabouts, and Reiko explained that they weren't very close to Aika because Aika tended to keep her distance from others. Kamido assured Reiko and her friends that they hadn't done anything wrong and that Aika probably had her own reasons. This motivated his classmates to try to get closer to Aika and build a friendship with her. At the welcome party, all the girls focused on Kamido's behavior. When he arrived at the food table, unfamiliar with the menu, Kamido decided to order Japanese food. Miyuki then brought a pot of instant ramen to the table, which annoyed Kamido slightly since it was considered commoner food. Reiko then asked about the strange aroma coming from Kamido's food. Kamido realized that the girls had never tasted instant ramen before. He explained that this food only needed hot water to prepare. When Kamido opened it, the girls were curious and tried it. They were all surprised and ended up really liking the taste. In another corner of the academy, Aika sat alone, enjoying her meal in silence. Aika felt more relaxed and comfortable eating alone, finding a rare piece that she couldn't find in the crowd. A grand celebration was held to welcome Kamido. With a grand dance and music from a brass band, the party atmosphere was very lively. The students enthusiastically joined in the dance, following the rhythm of the music. However, Kamido seemed less enthusiastic, which made Aika feel the need to ask what was bothering him. Kamido explained that he rarely attended events like this and didn't know how to dance. Reiko felt sad hearing that, but Kamido reassured her that it was okay and promised to try dancing if Reiko would join him. Although she was initially shy, Reiko eventually agreed, and they started dancing together. Kamido's awkward steps and strange movements caught the audience's attention. They thought it was part of a traditional dance and were surprised by Kamido's unexpected performance. At one point, Kamido almost made Reiko fall, but he quickly caught her, and they ended the dance with a perfect pose. Their performance was met with loud applause from everyone present. After the event ended, Kamido met Aika again, who seemed upset about his tardiness. Kamido explained that he had to attend the welcome party. Despite this, Aika asked Kamido to teach her how to be an ordinary person. Kamido thought about what he could teach Aika, and Aika's eyes landed on some manga on the shelf. Kamido then explained to Aika how to read manga, and Aika quickly became engrossed in the stories. However, Aika believed that the events in the manga were real and that ordinary teenagers had superpowers. Influenced by the manga's imagination, Aika decided to become a paranormal to become popular among the other girls. Kamido agreed to help her by teaching techniques believed to summon supernatural powers. When Aika tried to test the superpowers Kamido had taught her, she pretended to have controlled the power and acted as if she could stop time. Believing she had succeeded, Aika started teasing Kamido and tried to grab him. Kamido, realizing that Aika was just playing along, calmly reacted to her actions. He continued to pretend that Aika had indeed stopped time, even when Aika slapped him as part of the game. Finally, Kamido explained to Aika that all those powers were just part of fantasy and science fiction stories and that the manga plots she read didn't reflect reality. At night, Reiko enjoyed her bath, and as she stepped out of the bathroom, she found herself face to face with Kamido in a surprising situation. 
After admiring Reiko's beauty, Kimito apologized and quickly left the place. The next day, Reiko was lost in her thoughts, imagining the wedding she wanted to have with Kimito. Reiko had fallen in love with Kimito and was contemplating their future together. Meanwhile, elsewhere, two maids visited a girl's laboratory. They explained that the girl had a number of strict special rules, she couldn't dress herself and required food to be prepared according to her requests every day of the week. If these conditions weren't met, the girl would refuse to eat anything. In his daily routine, Kimito was woken up by Miyuki. Additionally, he received a message from his family informing him of their intention to visit Hakua. It turned out that, in exchange for Kimito's acceptance into the academy, his family had received a financial reward. Kimito quickly realized that he had become the center of attention in various places, whether in the lunchroom, in class, or even in the bathroom. The constant gazes from his classmates caused significant discomfort for him. On one occasion, Kimito decided to take a break on a bench in the school garden. There, he noticed a small girl riding on the ground in front of a statue. When Kimito approached to start a conversation, the girl, seemingly inspired, changed her clothes and continued writing mathematical equations. Realizing the potential misunderstanding if the girl remained in that state, Kimito decided to take her to his room. After briefly discussing the girl's behavior, Kimito asked her to put on some clothes. The little girl, who introduced herself as Hakua Shiodome, explained that she couldn't dress herself. Kimito then helped Hakua get dressed, and they introduced themselves to each other. Kimito asked Hakua if she didn't recognize him from the commoner's orientation meeting on the day he arrived at the academy. Hakua replied that she didn't attend the meeting because she was in her laboratory. Later, Hakua's stomach growled, and Kimito decided to cook some special ramen for her. Although she was initially hesitant, Hakua eventually agreed to try the dish and liked it after tasting it. After eating, Hakua fell asleep. When Kimito gently tried to wake her, Hakua suddenly got inspired and started writing equations on Kimito's desk while undressing again. At that moment, Aika entered the room and saw Kimito holding the little girl, who wasn't wearing pants. Aika misunderstood the situation, especially since Kimito was holding the girl's clothing. In the afternoon, Kimito accompanied Hakua and suggested that she learn to dress herself. They eventually arrived at Hakua's laboratory. After Kimito explained what had happened to Hakua, Hakua's assistant revealed that Hakua is a genius. They need to document every moment of Hakua's inspiration with photos because her involvement in the field of mathematics is crucial for many companies around the world. After the conversation, Hakua's assistant mentioned that they would prepare food for Hakua. However, Kimito quickly responded that it wasn't necessary because he had already prepared a meal for the girl. Kimito's decision surprised the assistant, considering Hakua had consumed something not included in her usual favorite foods. After finishing this discussion, Kimito intended to leave. However, Hakua stopped him by holding onto his sleeve and begged him to stay. Kimito explained that Hakua could visit him anytime she wanted before finally leaving the place. Hakua's assistant then discussed with their colleagues about the change in the girl's attitude towards Kimito. They revealed that although Hakua seemed like a little girl, she was actually 14 years old. Following this disclosure, they decided to keep the information confidential and continue monitoring Kimito to ensure there was no possibility of an affair. The next day, Kimito, Aika, and Reiko discussed their lesson on flower arranging. Kimito admitted his inability in the subject. Reiko offered her help whenever Kimito needed it. Then, the last member of their group was introduced. The girl was tall with black hair and always carried a sword. Despite having a flaw, her demeanor remained steadfast. When she saw an insect, the girl showed fear and tried to get rid of it with her sword. This action, in the eyes of the other girls, seemed like an attack on Kimito. Although the girl with black hair tried to explain that she didn't intend to attack Kimito, she continued to pretend and started calling him an insect and threatening him. The girl introduced herself as Karen Jinryo and began attacking Kimito. After dodging several of her attacks, Kimito made Karen angry. Karen then performed a wind vortex technique that had no effect on Kimito but sliced the uniforms of the surrounding girls, leaving them with only torn clothes. Shortly after the embarrassing incident, Kimito's clothes were torn, leaving him with only his simple outfit. This event caused embarrassment among all the present girls and led to Karen constantly mocking Kimito as a strange man. Facing Karen's stubbornness, Kimito decided to stop the verbal attacks more assertively. Unfortunately, this confrontation led to a situation where Kimito lost his clothes, as his pants were also cut. After this strange meeting, Karen asked about the commoner's powers, which Kimito humbly answered, claiming that he was the weakest.
Doubting Kamido's swordsmanship skills, Karen took the opportunity to challenge him to a rematch. However, in this fight, her clothes were also cut, leaving only her basic outfit. Confident in the clear difference in strength, Karen decided to become Kamido's apprentice. In the school corridor, the girls watched Kamido, who had now successfully turned Karen into his assistant. In a room, Aika shared her plan with Kamido to host a party to boost his popularity in class. Kamido thought the plan was good but reminded her that they would need many phone calls to invite their friends to the event. At that moment, Hakua suddenly appeared and offered to help make the phone calls in her lab. Aika, noticing the closeness between Hakua and Kamido, felt a bit of jealousy. When Karen entered the room and was surprised to see Hakua in Kamido's embrace, Karen expressed her admiration for the little girl. After a brief conversation, Kamido asked Karen about her presence there. Karen explained, as she had stated before, that she was now Kamido's. They agreed to spend time together until Karen was strong enough to match Kamido. Their conversation was interrupted when Aika asked Kamido why he was nice to everyone except her. Kamido replied that his coldness was due to his tsundra nature. Aika, who seemed a bit jealous, reminded them that they were in the club and suggested that the other two girls leave. Embarrassment was visible on Aika's face, and realizing it, she left the room with a shout before coming back. At the same time, an assistant delivered a much-anticipated package, a phone that Hakua had requested. Now, the two girls were in the room. Aika thanked Hakua and offered to take a photo together. After trying to take a picture of the three of them, Karen shyly asked to be included in the photo as well, though she felt a bit awkward admitting it. The next day, Reiko and some girls invited Kamido to a tea party in her room. However, Aika immediately appeared and firmly reminded Kamido that she could not attend. When the other girls asked Aika's reason, Aika, looking embarrassed, did not provide an answer. Aika then grabbed Kamido's arm and pulled him out of the room. In the hallway, Aika reminded Kamido that they had a club meeting to attend. Kamido said that the plan wasn't very urgent, but he eventually gave in and apologized to Reiko for his absence. In Reiko's room, the girls present began discussing the closeness between Kamido and Aika, commenting on the apparent developing relationship between them. Meanwhile, Kamido and Aika were in the former room, discussing the type of party they would host. Kamido suggested serving amiabo, a snack usually bought by students after class. Aika, who was initially hesitant, eventually felt confident after Kamido's explanation. Meanwhile, Reiko continued chatting with her classmates about the closeness of Kamido and Aika, feeling deep jealousy, especially after one of her friends mentioned that they might be a couple. Feeling deeply disturbed, Reiko eventually let her emotions out, shouting and running out of the room while crying. In class, Kamido noticed Reiko's friends crying and decided to investigate the situation. When Kamido approached Reiko, who was crying on her bed, he asked if they could talk about the issue. Reiko, feeling uncomfortable, said it was difficult to discuss with him. Kamido asked if the issue had anything to do with him. Feeling embarrassed, Reiko opened her room door to avoid further conversation. After a while, Kamido and Reiko shared a cup of tea, and Reiko eventually expressed her feelings and regretted her actions of yelling at her friends. Kamido decided to take steps to resolve the situation. When Kamido returned to his room, Aika was already waiting for him and seemed to know about the situation because she had been keeping an eye on it. Together, they decided to redirect the party they had planned to make Reiko happy. Aika proposed this idea with a bit of reluctance, but Kamido acknowledged Aika's sincerity in her intention to help. After giving her praise, Aika only nodded in understanding before leaving the room shyly. On the day of the party, Kamido gathered all the girls in the class to explain the extracurricular experience they would have, reflecting the life of commoners. At the same time, Reiko entered the classroom with a different appearance from usual. Her elegant look surprised her classmates, who praised her charming dress and hairstyle. Reiko then pulled out her phone and started sending messages, causing one girl's desk to shake and creating tension. Reiko asked all the girls to open their desks, as she would be distributing a mobile app to each of them. After giving a brief explanation about how to use the app, Reiko apologized for her previous bad attitude, especially to Ki, the friend she had clashed with. They reconciled and took a selfie together to celebrate the moment. After the party ended, Reiko expressed her gratitude to Kamido for his efforts in resolving the issues she faced. At that moment, it seemed like Reiko was about to make a proposal, but Kamido explained that the idea for the party was actually Aika's, not his. Kamido clarified that Aika wanted to throw the party to help Reiko, even though Aika preferred helping to celebrating herself. Hearing this explanation, Reiko felt jealous and misunderstood Kamido's intentions. In an emotional state, Reiko ran to Kamido's room, where Aika was waiting for her. 
When Reiko met Aika, she expressed her hatred, which made Aika feel angry and confused. Aika didn't understand the reason behind the statement, given her hard work to organize the party to mend Reiko's relationship with her friend. Tension escalated, and they started a fierce argument, fighting over Kamido's bed and insulting each other. This confrontation worsened their relationship, creating tension and hostility between them. Meanwhile, Kamido could only watch attentively as they fought. As the situation heated up, Kamido finally decided to intervene. However, his attempt to stop the argument was met with a pillow thrown at his face. The impact caused Kamido to fall, and this action made the two girls fighting worried. They quickly stopped fighting and approached Kamido to check on him. After Reiko left the room, Kamido and Aika began discussing Aika's past. In the conversation, it was revealed that Aika used to be similar to her other friends. However, in fourth grade, Aika fell seriously ill with a high fever. When Aika regained consciousness, she felt a change in her mindset, as if some of her memories had disappeared. Aika stated that she was not bothered by the argument with Reiko, as she was content with the current situation. Aika could enjoy Kamido's games and manga without any issues. At the same time, Karen and Hakua entered the room carrying application forms to join the commoner club. Shortly after, Reiko returned to the room with the same intention, although Aika had previously been reluctant to accept new girls joining. A brief discussion about Reiko's reasons for joining sparked a small argument. Meanwhile, Hakua was busy doodling on the walls, which Karen observed. At the same time, Miyuki appeared carrying large scissors. When she saw Kamido, Miyuki misunderstood the situation. In an attempt to convince her, Kamido said that he liked chubby men. Of course, this statement shocked the other girls, as they didn't expect something like that. 